For it's the Apocalypse chapter 145 is out, and this was once again another good chapter, as now we finally get not only the proper setup for the main fights of this arc, we also get to see King and Deanne's kids all unleash their abilities, and we get a bit of resolution to that little personal bubble that we saw in the previous chapter. And to an extent, the prediction I had about Myrtle is kind of correct, and we'll get into everything once we go through the initial chapter. But before we start anything, don't forget to like and subscribe, and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps, and it shows you guys enjoy the content I make here on the channel, and shows you want to see more. This arc seems like it's finally wrapping up and reaching the climax, and I'm excited to see what exactly happens in the coming future. So with that out of the way, let's get right into things. Chapter 145 of Four Nights of the Apocalypse, titled Family Battle, which honestly is very apt for this title, as this is literally the full-on fam family drama being brought into full force in an actual fight right now. Cover image is Kelb again as its actual true form, right in front of the cloaked figure that he has presided himself as. Which honestly, really cool cover page, I kinda like it, and the initial lizard man design I'm liking it a lot more as I see it more often. But we continue where things left off last week, where the Chaos Knight and their assassins essentially infiltrated the fairy realm, and the giants and fairies are wondering what's going on as these hooded figures have entered their space. Confronting the assassins, King says, I don't know who you are, but first you break your way into the fairy realm, and then you treat my precious son very badly. It'll cost you more than you can imagine. Kilbegan then tries to get into King of the Ants' head, and he says, If that's how you put it, Fairy King, are you sure you're not talking about how you treat Myrtle? As he then tells Myrtle to bring out all the darkness in his heart, in his gut. As the end goes up to Myrtle and begins to ask, What's wrong? And Myrtle, compelled by the chaos magic as was fairly obvious with the last chapter, ends up saying, saying, did you truly love me from the bottom of your heart? Deanne says, yeah, it's very obvious, but Myrtle calls her a liar. Myrtle then says that King gave the drug of yore to Nazianz instead of him, and that Deanne is no different, and in that instance, Myrtle's form begins to contort and twist as he seems to have chaosified into a malignant chaos beast, saying, all of you, you've all abandoned me, shocking King and Deanne at the grotesque form that this chaos mage has made their son. Now, Really quick, I just want to state that in the last chapter we got a peek into Myr Myrtle's subconscious through Sixtus as well as King, as they heard his inner thoughts saying that he didn't want to say any of that and he doesn't want to make them sad. So obviously, subconsciously, Myrtle is trying to fight back, but these are some twisted versions of his darker thoughts that Kilbegin is bringing out to the surface in order to mess with King of Deanne and cause some chaos for his plan. Kilbegin then tells the hooded figures now as they all scatter. As King tries to go after them, the Chaos Myrtle breaks out of and destroys Guardian. Now, do I think this Chaos Myrtle is strong enough to beat Guardian? No, I think it's primarily because King was not really holding any real power in Guardian. Myrtle is still a son, he was just holding him still so that he wouldn't hurt himself but the chaosification was enough to break out of Guardian and slash it up, because I doubt King wanted to put all of his force into using Guardian on his son. After Guardian is destroyed, King tries to go towards Myrtle, but the Yan tells him to let her handle it. As Sixus goes on to say, Better hurry, their guy, those guys are probably after the drug of yore, as, he's, as Sixtus says that he heard it in the guy's mind earlier. Not to mention that their plan seems to be for the leader to lure King away so that his minions can go after the drug of yore that's in his throne room. King smiles and tells Sixtus, how about I take care of that cheap bait and follow him? Sixtus, I know you don't like it, but can you sweep up the minions? And I like how King says this, knowing full well that his son is capable of just wiping out the, the riffraff quite easily. So, full on, 400% confirmed Sixus is the strongest out of King's children by just the sheer confidence King has in him to essentially present keeping the drug of your safe from these assailants as something more of like a chore for him to do. That he's like, I know you don't like to like it or want to hear it, but you mind just doing me this little quick favor? You know, like, it's kind of funny to see that. Plus, King ends up stating that it's fine even if they get there and not going to be able to enter and get the drug of yore without King's voice password. So Sixta says, okay, I'm game, but reminds King, this is all your fault because you kind of caused this whole mess in a sense. And he's not wrong. It's King fumbling the bag. I know I'm making the joke again, and it's not entirely King's fault if I'm being fully honest with you, but again, the meme is funny. King then uses spirits for Chastity Fold's 8th form pollen garden around Teori and Nazian's in order to help Nazian's heal better. But it's then that the king and his son go off in their own separate directions to face the Chaos Mage and his assailants. 
Meanwhile, Myrtle in his chaos form now is just causing all sorts of mayhem as he's just saying, give me the drug. Let me drink it right now. As the Maelstrom is kicking up from his blows onto the ground, is pushing everybody back. As the siblings are basically telling Myrtle to stop, Zana and Zeliana end up using their earth magic, hitting Myrtle with quad hammer, fish-shaped earth rocks, constantly hitting him on all sides. It's then Belt ends up using his hands and emotion to create a bind ivy attack, which I'm not entirely sure if this is a spirit weapon. It's not stated. He could just have the ability to manipulate the vines, and that's his baseline magical ability, which it's fine. It would be cool if all of King's fairy kids were able to have some sort of sacred treasure or sacred weapon from the fairy tree, but I'm fine with this if this is just a base magic power. But anyway, Belt binds Myrtle as he goes on to say, listen, cool your head for a bit. If you start struggling, those vines will rip your body apart. As Myrtle then wails out in anger as he then not only cuts himself, but breaks himself free from the vines and the quad hammers that are around him, shattering everything and blowing the rest of the kids away, even surprising the end. Teori in horror says that, now what are we going to do? At this rate, Merle and all of them are in deep trouble. It's then, Nauseans gets back up, stating that it's up to us. Let's protect Myrtle and the others. Tori brings up that Nazians has a broken arm and should be moving, but Nazian says, I know, but it got healed some time ago, which is interesting, and even Teoria pointed out, maybe it's that weird spirit she saw earlier, referring to the previous chapter where we got a little mini Percival popping up over Nazians. So this obviously resolves that end plot point, this was kind of sneaky of Nakaba to do, tease us with the potential of Percival's revival, but this was kind of what I was expecting. Percival essentially nudging or helping Nazians along the way since he's closer to the spirits in the fairy realm now. So it's very possible that Percival just brought his little Percival bubble and healed Nazian's arm since he was in a bind. And at the moment, there isn't any real sign of Percival showing back up, unless that's probably going to be a type of message he'll give to Nazians once the fight's already over. But after mentioning this, Teori's like, never mind, it might be my imagination, but ask Nazians if he's okay anyway. Cutting back to Myrtle, he is yelling out, I hate it all. As the children are about to go and try and face off Myrtle again and hold them back once more, the Yam tells them to step back and says this is a job for mom. So now the Anne is going to have to try and calm down her son, and I'm going to love to see the end actually do something. Obviously, she's probably going to not actually fight Myrtle. She'll find some way to at least calm him down or hold him still until they can basically get the chaos power out of him. But I can just tell that the next scene in the next chapter with this moment, it is going to be heartbreaking to an extent and showcase Deanne as the loving mother that she is in this series. We then cut back to King as he's chasing after Kilbegin. He unveils his hood and, set and begins to do a chant, conjuring up a double spell. Dark Ghost Horde and Tracer Enchant, and fires them off at King, saying to die. Now, let's be honest, every single time a Chaos Mage or Chaos Knight has attempted, you know, attempted, to do something to the sins, they have essentially gotten wiped out in an instant. I mean, look what bonded to Ironside. Now, granted, Gother was taken out to an extent by P Beltrop, and Pelgar was able to react to Gother's mental attacks. But, let's be honest, Gother is at this point the weakest out of the sins, so if anyone's gonna get actual battle damage, is the one that isn't fully capable of full-on hand-to-hand -hand combat or brute force, like the rest of them. Even King to an extent, but he's a lot more powerful and a lot more maneuverable than Go Gother, so it just comes with the territory. But these Dark Ghost Hordes begin to encase and go around King. But King shouts out, Spirit, Spirit, Chastity Fold, First Form, Chastity Fold, mow down. As in a awesome two-page spread, we see the Spirit, Spirit, Chastity Fold in all of its glory as it mows down, I know, pun intended, all of the Dark Ghosts that were surrounding King, blowing back Kilbegin. As King says, I've got this crazy powerful mage among my friends, you see. But you guys, I could handle you in my sleep. Which, I love how he literally just stated, yeah, you guys ain't nothing compared to Merlin at this point, so don't act like you're tough shit. Now, the fact that King, if he is referring to Merlin, and I highly, highly think he is, he probably still considers Merlin a friend, and perhaps they even know that Merlin isn't even in Camelot anymore. Heck, he might even know where she is for all we know. I'm reaching at this point, but I just find it interesting if he is talking about Merlin, that he still refers to her as one of his friends. So, it's just nice to see. Also, two-page spread, beautiful. Love it. Love Chastable and all of its glory. Can't wait to see this guy get mowed down or do some last-minute BS to try and at least make him be trouble for King. 
I do expect something like that to happen. So yeah, that'll probably be a thing. We then cut back to the Chaos Hooded figures as they approach King's Throne Room, just shooting magical blasts at all the fairies and giants in the area to get them to clear the way. As they make it to the top of the flower, and to King's Throne, they end up looking around for the Drug of Yore, as they do detect a purified magical force. But, as they begin to say this is probably the Drug of Yore, Sixtus appears in an instance and says, Yeah, that's right, but you'll never get your hands on it. Wanna know why? Because you got Sixtus here taking you on. Ending the chapter. So, yeah, this chapter was honestly really good. We got the Matt Bane setups of this fight in the finale of this arc finally coming to a head. King is taking on Kilb again and the Chaos Mage power. He's probably going to pull something out of his butt to try and at least give King actual trouble. Six is going to take care of all of the riffraff that are with them, which if there was going to be an interesting twist on how they would potentially like get the Drug of Yore, it would be interesting to get the last of the four perils secretly among these Chaos Assailants to actually overpower Sixtus and steal it. And maybe it might have something to do with their magical power. Or maybe they'll use Chaos, chaos Power to overwrite the password. Which I would be all for. That's my theory going on right now. And we got the end and then Nazian's and Tiore, most likely going to do something to calm down Myrtle and try and expel the chaos magic from within him in order to turn him back to normal. And we got the resolution for the Percival Golem, which it healed Nazian's arm off screen. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see more of it, but I feel like Nakba's saving Percival's return for later down the road. I do hope Percival doesn't have a full-on actual return later down the road, and if anything, he gives some sort of message through his Percival Golem for Nazian's about the future or how he can help. But that's really all I got for you guys at the moment. Not much else to see. I like the interactions in this chapter, and we finally got all the matchups set up, and there's still potential for some sort of last-minute twist to be had, like I mentioned. But what did you guys think of this chapter? What do you think are going to happen for things to either go completely wrong, or do you think present a challenge to the characters in this story right now? Let me know in the comments section down below. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps, and it shows you guys enjoy the content I make here on the channel, and shows you want to see more. Things have been really heating up right now, and I hope something happens that will shake things up even more, even amongst its actual resolution.